your arm. Yeah. Can you touch it with your other hand? Have you ever done that before? No, I haven't. That's, That's fucking awesome. <laughs> All right. That is amazing. It is. Holy cow. After my stroke, I did have spasticity and it was bad and it was painful. Having the spasticity is frustrating because you can't stop your own limbs doing it. It automatically does it. Spasticity for me limited my movement. I, you know, couldn't reach my head. I mean, it was very hard to walk. It made my movement very difficult. Spasticity will occur any part of the central nervous system, which is the brain, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. If you gripped your arms as hard as you could to get hurt, so your fingernails were in here, and you pull as hard as you can, and then in slow motion try to reach out forward to grab something, but resisting as hard as you possibly can, that's what spasticity it is. It is a co-contraction of muscles. You can't relax what you want to relax, and you can't use what you want to use. My really good friend and co-collaborator, Rajiv Rebai, told me about this great spasticity conference, the first of its kind that would be happening in Versailles. And I went there as a really good expert in spasticity, knowing how to manage it, know how to treat it. As the two days went on, I was actually getting really distressed in how advanced they were. They're offering their patients things that I've never dreamed of. And I just, you know, I looked around, I started to tremble and I said, you know what, I, I gotta do this. Like, I'm gonna go home. I have no money, no team, no funding, but I'm going to introduce this European technique that I learned in Versailles. What I learned in France was they had an incredible surgical neurectomy program. Surgeons would use microsurgery to dissect nerves to the spastic muscles. First, they did a diagnostic lidocaine block to the nerve they wanted and paralyzed it with an anesthetic. It was great, but we found the procedure a little bit cumbersome and slow as you kind of had to search blindly with a stimulator. And I thought, you know, we could probably do this with ultrasound faster. My goal was to work with Dr. Daniel Vincent to create efficient, fast diagnostic nerve blocks all over the body and turn this temporary procedure into something long-lasting months to years. Dr. Whitsett knew that I had been providing diagnostic and therapeutic nerve blocks using fluoroscopy and ultrasound for chronic pain management. And I said, Dan, you're an ultrasound expert in nerves. I'm an ultrasound in muscles. Could you teach me? Two weeks later, we are in Dan's office and we were doing ultrasound guided nerve blocks. We went back to the patients that we treated and said, did you like it? And they said, well, yeah, it was amazing. So Dan went ahead and did the first cryo. The patients kept saying, can you do my shoulder? Can you do this? Can you do that? Because there's no literature describing the targets, we had to discover our own targets. So over the course of patients of several years, we started to map out each area. We started with the treatment protocol in terms of determining which patients were appropriate for cryoneurolysis. This depended on the response of patients to the diagnostic local anesthetic nerve block. If there was a relaxation of the affected muscle group, then there was a high probability that they would benefit from cryoneurolysis. You're going to inject the local anesthetic we see a response or we don't see a response. The fact that um, Dr. Winston would start off before doing the cryoneurolysis with um, doing a neuroplot with a short acting local anesthetic, that these were all very reassuring facts. The world needs to hear about cryo. Now, I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist. I see, I see kids with spasticity and now, now I'm looking at them like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you just need cryo. You need cryo and at a young age. Pennies of lidocaine that is more powerful than the most potent neurotoxin that we have on a temporary basis. Okay. And now do that on that side. Oh, look at that. What's different? That moves. What normally happens? It doesn't. So the way that cryoneurolysis works is we are going to take this and insert it in the body. 
the gas is going to flow into this tube. When it drops to minus 88 degrees, it will freeze everything around it. There's no drugs in this process. It's the water in your body that will create an ice ball. So basically, we are ca causing targeted destruction of that nerve, which will completely regenerate in about six to nine months, but should have a longer lasting effect. After the cryo, I have not had any spasticity. I, it's been wonderful. I can actually now walk without falling over and without furniture surfing anymore. It's incredible how much um, it has improved my life. I was very skeptical in the beginning of this treatment because it's been 12 years since my accident. How can he really do anything? I was like, you know you would have never seen me again if this hadn't worked. He's like, oh, I know. Can you believe that, Jeff? Look at that. Look, Jeff, look at this. This is my hand touching my right ear. And, you know, with respect to the therapy that Dr. Winston has done and continues to do, it just continues to increase her quality of life. I want y'all to see something that I've been able to do for 12 years. Now I don't have to do it and get yelled at because I do it terrible. The, the really new and exciting portion for, for us here is this, you know, targeting motor nerves, targeting spasticity, stiffness, rigidity um, to improve range of motion and function. There is so much utility and it's very exciting to, to see how it is changing, uh, you know, really before my eyes and, and how patients are, are literally much better afterwards, and, and it's immediate. And it's the immediacy, I think, which is the newest feeling from a practitioner. To see the results then and there, um, I think that that's quite special. Oh no, you're not gonna go into your... I love this. We, we've had a whole day like this today. No, I'm doing it. I know. It. We've already been through this today, so we're well prepared. We like tears of joy. <laughs> Did it yourself. By myself. <laughs> okay, do it again. Do it again. So our whole pattern is based on assessing a patient, doing nerve blocks to show them this is what you're going to look like when we're done. And in this, we, we do an intervention and it's immediate. We see what the pattern is, we change it until we get the perfect amount of change that we like, but more importantly, the patient likes. Our journey is now, what can I keep adding to get that patient well and not a population, the patient in front of me. I really believe in the theory that medicine is movement and movement is medicine. Everything we do in physiatry is to keep your body moving. And I try to practice this in my own life as well. I know that is one of the things that not only brings me joy in my day, but it actually makes me feel human. So I will do everything in my power to help other people experience joy and freedom of their own in the world that surrounds them, just to even have one new position or movement of the body that lets them experience life a little bit more. Good. And then lift to the side. And go like this. From way overhead. <laughs> this is a game changer for the treatment of spasticity. Before this, it was either surgical options or temporarily 
paralyze the muscle, which is so limiting. This is so much more limitless of a treatment. It became this really emotional experience, like sometimes closing the door and like bursting into tears or bursting into tears with families because someone would open their hand and touch their parent's face or they, the spouse would grab their hand or they'd get up and walk without their brace or walk for the first time. And the things, the results are immediate. When you do cryo, you get the result and then it gets better over months. And suddenly in front of our eyes, people were unfolding. We are talking hundreds or thousands of patients' lives can be drastically improved by making this therapy, number one, known, and number two, available, so that practitioners across the world can bring the same benefits to their patients. The fact that we can now, with exquisite detail, figure out any motor pattern in the body and figure out if we can change or not has been the most joyful discovery for me.